Fox 61 News at 5 starts now. It, was, it wasn't exactly a fun, fun month for us. Inflation frustrations building across the country and the new numbers are out and they reflect the struggle felt by local businesses. Plus, a man is in a coma tonight after confronting a thief breaking into his car. There's a search now for what, who did this. We'll see how police are now turning to neighbors for help. Plus, New Haven's new police chief nominates his two new assistant chiefs, and we're sitting down with all three to discuss their plans to improve the community. Well, June's inflation numbers are in, and they are high. Good evening, and thanks for joining us here at 5. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. Well, inflation rose 9.1% last month. That's the highest yearly jump since 1981. You know, Fox 61's Tony Black spoke with a local grocery store and some of their customers on the challenges they face and how they are managing with the bigger bills. It wasn't exactly a fun, fun month for us. A tough month of June, stocking the shelves and keeping customers in the door at Hometown Market in Moodus. Inflation jumped more than 9% in June of this year from June of last year, an increase not seen in four decades. We've really had to, you know, home in on what the customers really like and what they want and kind of limit our options on some other items in the store. Store manager Matthew Maramont says they also faced item shortages and the price on some goods they could get their hands on more than doubled. They're trying to buy in bulk and had to cut back on some of the specialty products they like to offer. And really focus on the staple items um, that we know the customers need. Typically, customers will wait in line to get deli sandwiches in June to celebrate summer, but foot traffic was down as prices were up. Trying to keep the cases full and you know, the customer's happy was, was challenging. Every time I go in, you know, the bill increases higher and higher when I'm shopping, so. Joshua Coop says his grocery list was smaller in June because of costs. He had to make some sacrifices to get by. You end up not getting everything you need on your list. It was items like produce, meats, and dairy that really dug into wallets in June. And while there's been some relief at the gas pump, grocery stores are still waiting for theirs. I wouldn't say there's been any drastic um, change yet. Um, we're still hoping. Maramont says the hit is harder on smaller businesses like theirs, where they purchase items as they get purchased instead of larger discounted quantities. As we understand it's, you know, it's been a struggle not only for us as a store, but for the customers as well, you know, trying to you know, stock their fridges and keep their families fed. While a challenging month, the store manager says it's all thanks to the customers for keeping the shelves stocked. I look for the deals, so pretty much coupon shopping at this point. In Moodus, Tony Black, Fox 61 News. All right, Tony, thank you. We have some breaking news here at Five Markets scrambling today after that hot inflation report. The Dow slipped 208 points. The Nasdaq and S&P 500 were both off 17. Yeah, with today's numbers showing U.S. prices hitting a four-year high, economists are doing a double take, saying it's going to get worse before it gets better. But the White House says it sees signs inflation may be slowing with the hopes it's all downhill from here. And the numbers don't reflect the recent drops in gas prices. Average national gas prices have fallen every day for nearly 30 days. Since mid-June, prices are down 40 cents a gallon. Fighting inflation is one of our administration's top economic priorities. Historically, higher inflation means Americans have cut their spending. Spending makes up 70 percent of the U.S. economy. A drop in shopping means it's more likely the U.S. could slide into a recession. And here are the specifics on those gas prices. Today, the average price for a gallon of gas here in Connecticut is $4.60, two cents down from yesterday and about 16 cents lower than a week ago. Nationally, the average price for a gallon of gas sits uh, at $4.63 today. All right, let's turn to the weather watch now. Today, another beautiful, warm mm -hmm. summer day. Uh, may see some of that humidity begin to build back in as well, though. Meteorologist Ryan Bretton joining us now in for Rachel Frank with a look at what we can expect moving through the rest of the week. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Sarah and Brent. That's right. It was hot today, but not nearly as humid as yesterday. And you can feel the difference out there. We'll stay in a decent range as far as the dew points go, right around 60 for the next couple of days. But look at the big spike that's coming over the weekend. It looks like much of next week will be much more humid than we've been around here recently. Right now, radar quiet locally, but look to our west. There are a couple of pop-up showers in upstate New York. There could be a random shower tonight, but most of the night will end up being dry. Full moon comes up around 9 o'clock, and you'll have a good view of that. Just a few patchy clouds. Temperatures still in the 70s at that point. Here's the chance for a quick passing shower 
overnight, but I think they're, they're out of here by morning. We'll see a mix of sunshine and clouds tomorrow, and there may be a pop up shower tomorrow afternoon. It's a very similar summer weather and then we get sun and in the heating of the day there could be a quick passing shower. High temperatures tomorrow get way up into the 80s and then over the weekend we actually have a warming trend. Look at this on Saturday 88. That's not it. We're going to be challenging the 90s, not only on Sunday, but possibly a couple more days next week. We'll have all the details and a closer look at the weekend coming up in just a little while. Ryan, thank you. The highly publicized case of New Haven's Randy Cox becoming paralyzed while in the custody of New Haven police several weeks ago put the national spotlight on the department, which has undergone some changes recently. And last week, a new police chief was confirmed by the Board of Alders, and now the top cop is named two assistant chiefs. Back 61's Tony Terzi introduces us to the new department leadership. New Haven's new police chief, Carl Jacobson, says his two new assistants bring different strengths, which is always a good thing, including one who has helped to make the detective division more cohesive. Look at today. We have 144 guns off the street, most of them from the detective bureau, which uh, Bert Etienne was in charge of for three years. Bert Etienne and David Zanelli were unanimously confirmed as assistant police chiefs by the Board of Police Commissioners Tuesday night. It means a lot of responsibility. It means a lot of accountability, not only for myself, but for the people that I work with. We're very young in the police department right now. Our supervisors are young, and I want to bring stability, and I want to bring comfort. I want the officers to be able to do their job without fear. Zanelli has worked in many different capacities in his 15 years with New Haven Police. Very motivational. You know, him and I always talk about we're Patriots fans and Bill Belichick and do your job. Um, and I think uh, Dave Zanelli, that's that guy. And Zanelli's number one objective, transparency from the officers all the way up the ladder with the community. I had some really good experiences as the Fairhaven district manager where there's a lot of folks that want to work directly with officers. And Assistant Chief Etienne says his best quality is loyalty. I said coming here in 2001, uh, whatever police department gave me the opportunity to be a police officer, I would be committed to that police department. This team, I believe, is the best for the police department and to move the police department forward. Assistant Chief Etienne also pointed out that there seems to be a disconnect between young cops and veteran officers. and. One of his missions is to address that. Here at New Haven Police Department, Tony Terzi, Fox 61 News. All right, Tony, thank you. Tonight we are learning more about that deadly boating crash in Portland. One of the victims, a 59-year-old male, has been released from the hospital. He's one of seven people hurt. Two of them were children. Uh, it happened when the boat they were on hit some rocks on the bank of the Connecticut River. Tonight, a 45-year-old woman remains in critical condition. The rest of the people who were hurt are either in stable condition or were treated and released. But 60-year-old Wayne Hamler died in that accident. We're learning more about a house fire in Windsor Locks. Officials tell us they believe a lightning strike caused a home on Juniper Drive to go up in flames last night. The house was badly damaged, and the homeowners are now staying with family. No injuries have been reported. My breaking news now at 5 from Naugatuck, where a man remains in critical condition after he was hit by a car while trying to stop someone from breaking into his car. The girlfriend of that man speaks with our Carmen Chow, and just moments ago, police gave another update on their investigation. Carmen joins us live in Naugatuck with more on that and the plea from the family. Carmen, this is heartbreaking. Absolutely heartbreaking. Brent and Sarah Police say a vehicle related to the investigation has been seized and Connecticut State Police Major Crimes Unit is processing it for evidence. Now, police say the car is a black sedan. They cannot comment if the car is stolen or not or where the car was found specifically. Now, we do want to emphasize the suspects are still on the loose and they believe it is likely two suspects involved who intentionally struck Brandon that morning. It is also uncertain now if they are juveniles. Police are now asking 
asking for the public's help. If you have any additional surveillance footage or witnessed anything, to please come forward immediately. They did get their hands on some video, which has helped them with the investigation, but they cannot release it at this moment. We do know Brandon is in stable condition, but he is currently in a coma, and all family can do is rely on doctors' efforts. He's just like, you know, just a hardworking, normal person. Um, and his truck was his, like, livelihood. He had his tools in there. He has his own business. Of course, he was going to run out and try to see who was, who was breaking in his truck and try and protect his livelihood and his job. Um, and uh, we just want everyone to know that and that if they know anything to please say something, we just want to know who, who did this. We can't even fathom that there's people that disgusting in the world that would do something like that and just leave. To those who are responsible for this crime, we urge you to come forward and accept responsibility for your actions. Now, a family member has also stated Brandon does not have insurance, which is why they started up a GoFundMe page, which so far has over $7,000. If you would like to help the family out, we have the link on Fox61.com. Live in Nogatuck, Carmen Chow, Fox 61 News.